I'm out in my backyard again to do some more uh, work with my spectrum analyzer. Uh, first I thought I'd show you the test set up here. Um, it's been sort of cold. We haven't been, had a chance to get outside, but it's not, uh, sunny today even though it's chilly. Had snow on the mountains uh, on Mount Hamilton yesterday, which I took some pictures of. And uh, anyway, here's what I use to test antennas. Uh, you see a large pole leaning against the table. You see one sticking up through the table. And you see uh, an antenna resting on the table, which is a 420 to 450 megahertz antenna made by KLM Electronics uh, years ago. And it's very old. And we'll be taking a closer look at that. Here's a close-up of the uh, KLM antenna. And as you see, it's a six-element uh, antenna. It has a log periodic uh, feed. It has uh, three directors and no reflector. Uh, I make the presumption that uh, the pole, if it's vertically mounted, will act as a reflector for this antenna. And uh, you see the clamp is set up for vertical polarization at the moment. That's uh, typically how this particular antenna was uh, designed to be used. Although it could be set horizontal by uh, changing the screws on the uh, unit. As I said, this is a, an older unit, and you can see that quite clearly here with the condition of the uh, end connector. I think we're okay there, um, but there is some obvious rust. And down where the clamp is for mounting this uh, ballon, which is a uh, linear ballon that's uh, put on there, made out of uh, copper tubing. Anyway, uh, and there's uh, some condition problems also on the connections uh, to the driven elements here, which are, uh, as I said, log periodic. But uh, we're going to test it as it is and see what it looks like in terms of its standing wave. My mounting method for this uh, test is to aim the antenna straight up vertically away from the ground so that it's not interacting with the ground and we're presuming some front to back ratio on this thing. I used uh, some um, Velcro cable ties here or, or whatever you want to call them. They're actually for gardening. Uh, you can buy uh, be bought in a large roll from uh, gardening supply stores. And to keep it from sliding down, since I've got it on this bottom tube here, um, I normally address the end of the uh, unit on that uh, upper tube coupling. But in this case, uh, I don't need to have the upper, cup, uh, upper tube, so I've left it off and just use some uh, duct tape to uh, hold the thing up so it won't slide down. And uh, here's, uh, here's how the whole thing looks from a distance. I'll back up here. So we are a couple of wavelengths above ground, aimed, aimed up. As you can see, I have the Rigel unit sitting next to my uh, antenna and uh, fixture here. I've got it off to the side so that it probably has less coupling uh, and influence uh, to the measurements. Um, I've got my uh, ZFDC uh, 20 dB coupler from Mini Circuits here, and uh, I've got a cable going. Uh, it's going around to the uh, uh, receiver input, and then uh, another. The green one is going around to, to the uh, uh, coupler, and I have the 10 dB pad here. Here's the uh, test setup in its completion. I'm using the scope case over on the right here to block some of the sunlight from causing uh, reflections. I also used a, uh, a stand here and a uh, cover from my Weber grill to black out some of the reflections that are being seen by the screen. But visually, uh, I don't have too much trouble. It's only the camera that's seeming to struggle. 
as you see, uh, I do have the uh, 10 dB pad in there on the output of the tracking generator. And the green cable goes up to the, uh, to the little box here, which is the coupler, and goes into the output port. The couple port is the black cable that returns to the spectrum analyzer at 20 dB down. And then uh, on the input port, I have an adapter and a cable that goes up over the top here and then down to the connector of the um, antenna being tested. So a quick setup, we are going to uh, first uh, adjust our bandwidth over here to uh, maybe 30 kilohertz. And the video bandwidth will set to maybe 3 kilohertz. No, that's a little too slow, so let's make it maybe 10 kilohertz. Okay, that's the whole range, but we only want a frequency range of, say, uh, I'll start frequency of maybe 400. megahertz and stop frequency of maybe 500 megahertz. So there we have a pretty good sweep. We can probably now increase our uh, band or decrease our bandwidth from 10 to 3 kilohertz. Smooth that line out a little more. Now it's sweeping fairly decently and uh, we're, uh, we're in business. Okay, now we'll turn the tracking generator on here. By hitting tracking generator to get the menu and then turn it on. And you'll notice that the line has gone up to the center of the screen here. That's because the thing's set at uh, minus 20 dBm right now. So let's set that to 0 dBm. That way we get to about minus 30. We've got a 10 dB pad here, minus 30, so and 20 dB through the uh, uh, coupler. So that's, that's correct. It's right on the line there, plus or minus a little bit. And uh, so no problem there. Uh, if I turn the tracking generator off again, See, it goes down more than 40 dB, looks like. So uh, that's good enough to do the return loss measurements. So let's turn the tracking generator back on. All right. And then let's go to uh, normalize. Turn the nor uh, store the reference, which is this line. And then push in and hold slightly the normalize button until the thing takes here. There it goes. Puts it at zero up there. So we have zero at the top, but uh, as I like to say, uh, I like to get it below this. So we'll uh, go down 20 to 20 dB here. So we'll make the reference level 20 dB which puts a line here. Okay, now uh, we'll be able to see the return loss uh, very nicely. I had to set this up in the shade a little bit and, and so forth to get a good screenshot here. Uh, but actually, uh, visually, it's much better than even what you're seeing on the screen here. Um, because I can move my head and get rid of reflections. Uh, but uh, the way you would normally uh, improve the 
brightness here would be to use the system button over here system and then uh, display and brightness which I've put to 7 so 7 either that way and enter or using the knob over here on the right you can do the same thing anyway 7 is as bright as it goes it normally for indoor use is somewhere in the 2 range uh, typically so just thought I'd point that out well as you see we have a fairly decent resonance with this antenna but it is peaking at, uh, let's find out what the peak is we'll hit uh, peak and then we'll hit uh, minimum search and that uh, gives us, well it changed a little here, let's try this again, minimum search alright and that is at uh, minus 37 at 437 megahertz interesting we can uh, move that marker and find out where the 14 dB points are which looks like at 431 Well, yeah, that's 16 actually, so let's go to 14. 14.2, 14 14.0. 428 is at 14.0, which is a 1.2 to 1, something like that. And 14.0 on the top side. is 448.6 so pretty close to 450 450 is actually uh, a little bit uh, higher it's 450 megahertz and it's 13.16 so it's still better than one and a half to one which is all they claim and uh, cover that whole band pretty well. So all in all I'd say the antenna is tuned as claimed and uh, does the job. The spectrum analyzer here with the tracking generator also does a fairly decent job. I'm not certain about uh, some of the results here but I do have uh, as you saw uh, some cable issues potentially here too because I've got a cable between the coupler and the antenna which gets involved in this whole thing. Um, that is not the ideal way, but I don't have any longer cables to do this job with at the moment. I redid the uh, resonance for this antenna and uh, got better results, I, I believe, by uh, removing the cable between the coupler and the uh, antenna in connecting the coupler directly onto the ballon that uh, feeds the antenna. And this is the result that I obtained, which is uh, shows a much better resonance between 420 and 450 than the other. And here's my test set up. I've got the spectrum analyzer and then resting on the uh, coupler here you can see the end of the uh, antenna with its um, coupler between the two bands which is uh, 2 meters and 432 and then as we go up we see the uh, velcro holding the thing against the uh, tube here and everything's aimed up in the air so it doesn't interact with the ground very much I can extend this tube higher by putting a tube in the center. This is a two inch tube and I put a one and a half in the center and I can go up about twice as high which is oh, about eight feet, nine feet, something like that. Which means I can uh, put a fairly decent sized antenna on there as long as it's not too heavy. 
you notice I have the scope case here and the cover of the uh, Weber grill here to reduce reflection so I can take the video and uh, as we go around here you can see I put this thing on the table but it, since it's on the other side from the uh, director of this antenna it shouldn't be interacting very much if at all using this uh, setup we got the resonance of the uh, 400 meg portion of this antenna and as you see at uh, 432 it's got about 20 db and 15 uh, at 440 and at 450 it's degraded a little bit to 976 same antenna same uh, duplexer i've uh, gone down to uh, 140 to 150 here for the frequency range and as you see it's down here at uh, minus 30 which is where it should be with a 10 db pad here um, and uh, uh, as you can see here we have this open if I put uh, uh, first let's uh, normalize it all right I've normalized uh, the normalize but it didn't normalize oh first store the reference all right, then normalize it, and uh, let's see here. I'll turn the normalization on. I'm sorry, have to hold it in. Didn't take that time. We'll do it again. There we go. Now you see that it's uh, it's on the zero line here. And if I'm prepared to take my Various attenuators here. We'll try the 20 dB. That should uh, give me a pretty good return loss, which it does, down around 30. 6 dB ought to give me about 12, which it does. Let's um, actually uh, determine what that level is by using a marker and. Uh, Mark 1 uh, is right there, and it's minus 11, so it's almost minus 12. The red load here, if I put that on, is down there in the 25, 27 dB range, which is good. Uh, if I put the blue one on, it's at about uh, 14, and the blue one, of course, is... The 75 ohm, so we're we're still pretty good on the uh, 140 to 150 band. A little bit better than the 432 band or 440 band, um, but that's because this analyzer uh, likes it better there. But anyway, either one's reasonable enough. So now let's put it on the antenna up here. And here's what this antenna does uh, at uh, 2 meters, 140 to 150. Again, the markers will uh, start with uh, marker 1. We'll put it at 144 megahertz, which is right there at uh, 16 dB. And then we'll go and set it up for marker 2 and put it at 145 megahertz all right still almost 15 db and then um, we'll go for marker 3 at 146 megahertz still about 15 db and then we'll go to the upper end of the band, which is 148. Uh, so, marker 4, 148 entered on the keypad. And uh, there we are at 148, which is 14.5. So, pretty flat across the entire 2 meter band and beyond. Uh, in this case, it's a, a little better down at the low end here.
um, which I've done intentionally to try to keep the best performance down around 144, which is where I normally operate. But it covers the entire band. So I think we're in good shape with this antenna. It can go up on the tower now.